talking today about Chapter 18 in your Applied Pharmacology book. This is miscellaneous uh, therapeutic agents that we can use in veterinary medicine. We have defined nutraceutical before, we have defined chondroprotectants before, but we're going to talk also about some more herbal products, um, some regenerative medicine uh, treatment methods there, and then also some lubricants. Again, nutraceutical is the use of micronutrients, macronutrients, and other nutritional supplements as therapeutic agents. It's food using, used as therapy. Chondroprotectives are substances that are able to decrease the progression of osteoarthritis by providing support to cartilage and promoting its repair. They're um, available both as oral or injectable medications. So this is most of what we're going to be talking about. Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act, or uh, DSHEA, listed dietary supplements as vitamins, minerals, amino acids, herbal products, and substances that supplement the diet by increasing total dietary intake. It's up to the veterinarian to evaluate the suitability of nutraceuticals for use in companion animals. There may be some things that would be good for one pet or one species and completely toxic to another. So we need a veterinarian to look at these dietary supplements um, and make sure that they are okay. Um, so looking for these seals like a USP seal or a National Animal uh, Supplement Council seal, those are some quality seals that we're going to look for on these products. You're going to get questions every single day. Can I use this on, with my pet? Is this going to make their hair coat better? And the problem is there's not a lot of oversight with much of the, these supplements. So you really need to know who in the business is actually putting what they say they're putting in to the supplement. And there are several uh, veterinary products out there that we're going to uh, go over that we know that these are good products. And so we're going to recommend that you recommend these products over products you might get from Fosters and Smith or Chewy.com. Um, because we know that they work and we and the oversight on some of these products is not very good and we don't know that they actually have what they say they have in the medication. The first product we're going to talk about are polysulfated glycosaminoglycans. We can call them PSGAGs for short. These are repeating chains of hexosamine and hexuronic acid. Um, the complex nature of this molecule allows water to be trapped in a hyaline cartilage to provide resistance to compression and resilience to the proteoglycan and collagen matrix. Um, if you think about your joints, you want to have good compression and resiliency in your joints. They, they take a beating. Uh, and the more um, resistance to compression um, and the more resiliency, um, the healthier that, that uh, joint will be. They also reduce inflammation by inhibiting prostaglandin release in the joint injury. So these can be really, really helpful. Um, an example of this is Adequan. They make Adequan for dogs and for horses. And uh, what we do is we inject it into the uh, animal and it goes to the joints and creates uh, a better joint. And this can, have, this can last for a very long time. It can last for six months to a year after a couple of injections. So it's super helpful with painful joints. Glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate. Now there's a little bit of controversy because glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate are believed to ask, act synergistically to uh, reduce inflammation in the joint, but there's not a whole lot of research behind it. So we're, we're going based on, um, on anecdotal evidence or the owner saying, oh, I think my pet is doing better with it. So what are they? Glucosamine is an amino sugar that's manufactured by animal cells from glucose and used by the body in the synthesis of glycoproteins and PSGAGs. So it's a building block of things that can protect the joint. Um, chondroitin sulfate is very similar, and so the both, of, both of those together are supposed to work in order to help build joints. It does take some time for us to actually see a therapeutic effect, so four to six weeks is uh, not uncommon. When we see um, cosequin, given this is cosequin double strength, um, when we see cosequin being given, we want to look to make sure that when we see glucosamine 
um, hydrochloride and chondroitin sulfate that they have at least one other thing in it. Manganese is something all of our bodies are missing. Uh, so we found that supplementing with manganese can be helpful uh, with that. But I prefer to give something that has more than just glucosamine chondroitin sulfate because I really feel like uh, there, we need more building blocks uh, in there than just these two things. They, don't, they work okay, but they're not perfect. Um, this is uh, Cosequin DS, um, which is um, uh, made for dogs. They also have this in a powder for um, horses as well. What I'd like to see in joint supplements is either hyaluronic acid or MSM. Um, that's a, a, another um, building block of the uh, cartilage. Hyaluronic acid is a major constituent of synovial or joint fluid, which uh, when we give it, it decreases inflammation to the tissue surrounding the joint and repairs the joint cartilage. We can give it IV or we can give it intraarticular, but you do have to look at the bottle and make sure, so this one says IV or intraarticular, this one says IV, this one says IV only, not for intraarticular use. And this is a multi-dose vial, which means you're giving it a number of times, which is why we don't want to also give it into the joint because we're entering the bottle a, a number of times and that can be very dangerous to put it into the joint. So hyaluronic acid, this is legend, um, but there are uh, canine um, formulations of this as well, and it's something that we can actually give orally, and uh, they do have some, um, some uh, benefits. Um, fatty acids, omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids are the ones most often found in commercial veterinary um, uh, fatty acid supplements. Uh, omega-3 fatty acids are apparently less powerful mediators um, than those derived from omega-6 fatty acids. So we want our omega-6 fatty acids more than anything else. Um, these two are made by uh, Nutramax, um, Cosequin ASU, and Dasequin. Um, this is for dogs, uh, and they have them for different sizes, and this is for horses. The ASU is what where we get the omega-6 fatty acids from. And this is avocado soybean unsaponifiables. Um, so I'm sorry, this is where we get omega-3 fatty acids, but these, these particular omega-3 fatty acids act more, because they're unsaponifiables, they act more like omega-6 fatty acids. So we're mimicking that omega-6 fatty acid with that. Um, this is really, really effective stuff. Uh, in fact, um, a lot of people are reporting that they are able to take their dog off of Rimadyl after having them on this supplement for six weeks. So this is something that is uh, far better for the joints, far better for the skin, far better for the brain than having them on a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. It works both for horses as well as for, uh, uh, for dogs. As Adenosylmethionine. I'm just going to call that Sam E. And most people do. It's recommended for veterinary use as a dietary supplement to support normal structure and function of the liver. Some studies have shown that this substance increases levels of glutathione in the liver, which is uh, supportive of the hepatocytes. So I have uh, pulled uh, from this, and if you look at the alternative text, I'll, uh, it, it uh, references where I pulled it from. Um, this article about SAMe, uh, it's uh, used in the body for many important functions such as brain, heart, hormone, antioxidant, detoxifying, and other metabolic functions, and used as a supplement to treat liver disease in pets, especially cats and dogs. So using SAMe, there's a lot of different um, formulations. Denosil is probably the one you'll hear most. Uh, that, again, is another one made by um, uh, Nutramax. And uh, Nutramax, um, as a company, only works with veterinarians, um, so you're going to see this in a veterinary practice more often. So SAMe is a uh, powerful antioxidant that works really, really well. Superoxide dismutase is an oxygen radical scavenger that has been used as an anti-inflammatory 
agent for musculoskeletal problems. So um, superoxidase uh, oxide dismutase is an anti, very powerful antioxidant. Coenzyme Q works with antioxidants. It's the enzyme cofactor of mitochondrial membranes that's important in electron transport and ATP formation, so it gives more energy to the cells. It's used to support the cardiovascular system. So superoxide dismutase is for musculoskeletal problems. Coenzyme Q is for the cardiovascular system. So there are a variety of herbal medicines that are used um, to treat veterinary patients. These are all derived from plants. There are very few controlled substances or studies that have been performed to document the safety and efficacy of herbal products. I do want you to turn to your text and look at table 18.1 because it shows where uh, we have um, contraindications of using certain herbal medicines with other medications we may be using. Most of our drugs are coming from plants. And so when we use an herbal medication along with a, a drug that is coming from the same plant, you're going to see some bad interactions. So say table 18.1 gives you a list of those. So I do want you to take a look at that uh, and make sure you understand that for the safety of the animal. Um, most people think that herbal medicines are completely benign. Anytime you take it, uh, that you're just doing your body um, good, uh, good, good things to your body. That's not necessarily true. You can overdose with it, um, and you can it can interact with medications that you're already on. There are a number of different forms of botanicals. We can get it in a dried bulk herb. We can get dried extract, or we can get liquid extract. Here I've made a list of some herbal products. There's this is more than are, are just in your book. Um, but these are herbal products that have um, certain, are believed to have these effects. So I would recommend that you go through this, maybe print this chart out, post it on your wall, um, so that when your client comes in and says, well, I want to give, you know, I'm somebody told me to give ginkgo because it's going to increase the memory of my pet. You can say, you know what, that is supposed to do that. Um, but make sure you're doing it at the right dose. One thing that we do often use in veterinary medicine for liver disease is milk thistle. It's a hepatoprotectant and an antioxidant that helps the liver to regenerate. So I have used milk thistle extremely effectively uh, within veterinary medicine. Um, some of these others uh, you will see people using like garlic as an antiparasitic. There are no antiparasitic properties that are proven. What it can do is make the blood um, uh, not tasty to parasites, and so it can it can be a, a anti-parasitic in terms of a um, it keeps parasites away, but it won't kill parasites necessarily that are already on the pet. Or um, it it also if the parasite is really hungry, they're going to ignore the garlic. So garlic is used as a disinfectant, a diuretic, and an expectorant, but should not be used as sole flea treatment. Um, so just look through these. Um, marshmallow is, is not actual marshmallows, so don't go eat your marshmallows and say, oh, it's an anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial. This is actually a, uh, uh, comes from a plant. Uh, so it can uh, be something that uh, you can use, but um, not by eating the marshmallows that you have at home. Okay, um, This uh, Yunnan Baiyao is a uh, topical medication that is used for wound healing, a pain reliever, and to stop bleeding. So just go through these. This is really kind of interesting. Um, saw palmetto you definitely don't want to use in because uh, it is very toxic to animals, especially cats. Um, and so this is something you would have to be used very, very carefully. This is interesting. Um, this is, you know, fairly new. It's been around for about 10, maybe 20 years. It's called regenerative medicine. And this refers to the use of cells, cytokines, scaffolds, and growth factors to improve the repair of damaged or poorly functioning tissues or organs. An example of a scaffold would be using tissue from deceased uh, people um, or animals. Uh, as something on which our body can build living cells. So if you've ever heard of somebody getting cadaver bone uh, in order to replace um, damaged bone, 
That's what a scaffold is. Some treatment methods you might be um, uh, familiar with would be stem cell therapy using this um, cell, the baby cell that is responsible for making bone, blood cells, organs, uh, muscle tissue, or nerve tissue, and injecting that and encouraging them to turn into some of these tissues and to heal those, those tissues. We can also use platelet-rich plasma and infuse platelet-rich plasma and interleukin-1 antagonist protein. Stem cell therapy, um, stem cells are cells that reside in most native tissue of both the adult and the embryo. We can use either adult stem cells or embryo stem cells. Um, it's essential for maintenance of homeostasis. If we don't have enough stem cells uh, in our body, whether they're embryonic um, or adult, now, of course, as adults, we're going to be um, using adult stem cells. Embryonic do come from fetuses or from umbilical cords. Uh, we can get it from babies that are have been born um, from their umbilical cords, and they can be saved for that particular individual. Uh, or, and they can be grown from your own adult cells. There are companies that provide stem cell products or services, and these include VetStem, Medivet, and Animal Cell Therapies. Um, the, their, uh, Rudin Riddle down in Lexington is a huge, uh, very famous equine hospital, and they actually have their own stem cell lab. They grow stem cells from um, animal cells, not uh, stem cells actually can be grown from fat cells, but they're not as, they're not as effective, but they actually grow the stem cells from the animals themselves. Um, and so they have very successfully uh, turned this into a business where they're injecting joints with the animal's own stem cells. So they have their own stem cell lab, which is pretty cool. Platelet rich plasma, plasma or PRP. Um, this is platelet concentrated plasma that it's obtained from anticoagulated whole blood by a centrifugation process. These platelets are concentrated around the buffy coat near the top of the red blood cells at the distal end of the plasma. So if you think about doing a blood smear and where you find those platelets, especially those that are individual, it would be right at the end there where you're starting to count the, the um, white blood cells at that single layer of red blood cells. That's where you're really going to see those platelets. Um, and if you spun that down, you would find it um, between the buffy coat um, uh, on top of the uh, red, red blood cells. These are used primarily by equine veterinarians for tendon and ligament injuries and promote granulation of tissue defects. So think about what platelets do. They congregate at a wound they, they release tissue factors to bring in healing um, factors to that wound. So if you take a bunch, you concentrate a bunch of platelets and you inject it right on the wound, you're increasing the healing of that wound. Some companies that supply PRP products include VetStem and Medivet Biologics. Interleukin-1 or IL-1 antagonist protein. This is a pro-inflammatory cytokine that acts as a major mediator of joint disease. So if we antagonize it or block it, then we won't get as much joint disease. It's produced by synoviocytes, chondrocytes, and white blood cells. It stimulates neutral proteinase uh, production. Um, treatment with IL-1 raw is called, and so that's just a, um, a strain of interleukin. It's called IRAP therapy. Companies that provide IRAP therapy or products called uh, include Arthrex, Vet Systems, and Decra. Lubricants. These are used to lubricate hands, arms, or instruments before gynecologic and rectal examinations. So just a miscellaneous thing. You can see it as KY jelly, lube jelly, or Lubervet. Here's a big bottle of Lubervet we use in equine or uh, bovine medicine to lubricate um, during or rectal exams or gynecologic exams. That's what we have for miscellaneous drugs. I hope that was interesting for you. Please go back, look at 18, uh, chapter um, 18, table 18.1, and also look through those herbal formulations.